WWDC may have some very big surprises in store for us this year. This is typically the event that we hear all about the software updates coming to the iPhone and the iPad and the Apple Watch and other Apple products and services, but more and more rumors suggest that this year, Apple could launch a number of exciting new products. Some actual tangible physical hardware could launch in just a few days at WWDC. So what could launch? In this video, I'm breaking down the six most exciting Apple products that could launch in just a few days from now, and also some bonus products that might not launch at WWDC, but could launch very shortly after. A lot to get excited about, a lot to break down, so let's get into it. And a big thanks to Backblaze for sponsoring this video. Now, I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but WWDC is typically not the most exciting Apple event of the year. We don't get a ton of new hardware, typically. Usually it's a lot more technical focused. It's geared towards developers. There's more in-depth content on the software and updates coming to the iPad and iPhone and stuff like that, which is to be expected. But sometimes we get a surprise and sometimes we don't. Like a look at the Mac Pro and the Pro Display XDR. And sometimes it's just same old, same old iOS software updates. But this year could be different because there is a lot of hardware that could potentially launch and a lot of big surprises that could come to this year's WWDC. So let's just kind of get the obvious out of the way first things first. Yes, we will get a look at iOS 15, the big software update coming to the iPhone that will launch sometime this fall. But interestingly enough, this year, there isn't a whole lot we actually know, which means that Apple is either doing a really good job keeping everything under wraps, or there's not a lot of big changes expected to come to this next version of iOS. A recent report from Bloomberg sort of gives us our best look at iOS 15 to date. And what was in that report is kind of what you'd expect to change with this next version of iOS. Apple will kind of revamp how they do privacy, safety, and security. I'm sure there will be a lot more in this version of iOS in terms of app tracking transparency, taking things a step further. There should be a change to the way that notifications are handled, maybe giving users a little bit more control on how notifications appear, when they appear, automatic replies in certain scenarios. And also Apple is continuing to sort of double down their efforts in terms of iMessage to make that a very versatile platform for iOS users. Exactly what they could be adding to iMessage. We just don't know specifics, but we do know that Apple wants to kind of go head to head with Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp and other messaging platforms and really make iMessage the messaging platform you want to use. So hopefully some really good additions come to that app as well. We're also hearing iPad OS may give users a little bit more control and flexibility as well, potentially allowing you to put widgets sort of anywhere on the display and maybe even move apps around. But that's sort of it. Don't expect Mac OS to come to the iPad or anything like that. Uh, like I said, very little is known about what Apple is uh, going to change in terms of software for the devices, which hopefully means there's some big surprises in store, but seeing as last year iOS 14 was a pretty big leap, uh, it might be a, a good idea to kind of temper expectations for this year's update. What will be a pretty major announcement though is what is supposedly confirmed for this year's WWDC, at least according to John Prosser, and that is the release of brand new MacBook Pros. Now it's unclear if we're gonna get one MacBook Pro or multiple MacBook Pros, but here's sort of what we know as of right now. Apple is planning to release two new versions of the MacBook Pro, a 14 inch model, Model and a 16 inch model. These are the higher end Apple laptops that will come equipped with the new version of the M1 processor. Rumor has it right now, it's gonna be called the M1X. According to Bloomberg, this processor should be an absolute powerhouse. So MacBook Pro is coming equipped with a 10 core processor and options for either 16 cores or 32 cores for the GPU and the support for up to 64 gigs of RAM. The MacBook Pro should have some physical changes on the outside with an all new chassis that hopefully gets a bit of a redesign and also the reintroduction of all all those ports we have long been waiting for. These new MacBook Pros will still pack a number of Thunderbolt equipped USB-C ports, but will also reintroduce a full-size HDMI port, a full-size SD card slot, and a MagSafe charging port, which it's unclear if it's gonna look like sort of the old MagSafe style charging port we had on MacBooks and MacBook Pros many years ago, or if we could see sort of a redesign, sort of a take like what we have on the iMac. Whatever it's gonna be, I am super excited to see MagSafe finally return to the MacBook Pros and the introduction of full-size ports ports, a sort of a new design, uh, the processing power, the display, all of this sounds really exciting and I cannot wait to see these new MacBook Pros finally launch. Now, as exciting as all of this is, there still are some mysteries and some questions that remain about these new MacBook Pros. 
First is about the display. We heard that Apple could give these new MacBook Pros a mini LED display, which would be super great to see, but some rumors suggest that this is going to happen, while others suggest that there are too many technical and production limitations right now that make this sort of impossible and probably will get pushed until 2022. So it's unclear whether these new MacBook Pros will have mini LED displays or not. Next, John Prosser says they are confirmed to be announced at WWDC, which is gonna be nice to see, but it's unclear when they are going to launch. Is Apple going to make them available the next day? Day, the day of, a week later, three weeks later. We don't know if they're sort of going to stagger the launch. Some rumors suggest that there could be some supply constraints for these new MacBook Pros when they launch. So it's gonna be interesting to see when these actually launch and when they get announced and when you'll actually be able to get your hands on these all new port-filled MacBook Pros. Next up, let's talk about the M1 iPad Pro because this is another mystery that's causing sort of some theories, I don't wanna say conspiracy theories, but definitely some weird theories for WWDC. Some suggest that the M1 in the iPad Pro of 2021 is so powerful, so advanced, so capable, that it's just dumb of Apple to put it in a tablet without giving us a way to really work that processor. Now you can work the processor pretty well with the iPad OS apps that you can put on it right now, but there are some theories that suggest that maybe Apple could unlock some new apps at WWDC, specifically apps like Apple Pro and Apps. Maybe this is the event that Apple finally releases Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and other Pro and Creative apps on the iPad Pro. We just don't know, though it does kind of make sense that the iPad Pro now has keyboard support, trackpad support, a super powerful desktop level processor. It makes sense that now is the time to sort of unlock a little bit of that power. Next up, let's talk about something that's been causing quite a bit of controversy in the world of Apple and music, and that is the announcement of this new Apple Hi-Fi lossless music streaming and the addition of spatial audio inside of Apple Music. Now, the technology itself sounds cool, the feature set is awesome, the fact that it's free is like the cherry on top, but many are confused, concerned and upset that the support for this is sort of all over the place. And I'm not an audiophile, so I don't really claim to understand it all fully, but according to John Prosser, this could potentially be fixed. He says with basically the magic of a software update over the air, that Apple could fix these issues and limitations with Apple Music and loss of streaming with AirPods Pro, AirPods Max, and regular AirPods, and hopefully other Apple products with the introduction of this software update. Now the rumor is that Apple could sort of introduce AirPlay 3 that would sort of of ditch the limitations and bandwidth requirements and stuff like that of Bluetooth and allow you to do way more, maybe even stream lossless audio over AirPlay wirelessly through this third generation AirPlay technology. This could also be great for lower latency stuff. It could maybe support new versions and new additions to spatial audio. It's just a really cool thing to see and it does make sense. It's been a while since we got AirPlay 2, so AirPlay 3 could be potentially right around the corner and fix a lot of these issues. We're also expecting to see potentially the announcement of AirPods 3. They're sort of supposed to be this hybrid between AirPods Pro and AirPods 2, sort of this new AirPods 3 look, looks very similar to AirPods Pro with a new shorter stem design and a new case. But what we don't know is the software support. As of right now, transparency mode, active noise cancellation, spatial audio, those are all reserved for AirPods Pro. But with the introduction of AirPods 3 and maybe AirPlay 3, could we see some of this magic sauce like spatial audio come over to these lower and AirPod. Before we continue with more WWDC rumors, I wanna take a quick break and talk about something very near and dear to my heart, very special, and that is backing up your data. Look, I'm sure you've been there, I've been there, whether you've accidentally formatted a drive or a drive has gone bad, it is horrible to lose files and photos and precious documents that you just can't get back and unfortunately it happens all the time. But fortunately for me and you, it doesn't have to happen to us anymore because we can have our files automatically backed up safely, securely, automatically off-site by using this video sponsor, Backblaze. Backblaze lets you back up your entire PC or Mac. Every file, every photo, every video, everything on your computer can be backed up to Backblaze for just six bucks a month. No gimmicks, no gotchas, no storage caps, data limits, nothing like that. Six bucks a month gets you unlimited backup of everything on your computer. The team at Backblaze are absolute pros, helping customers recover over 50 billion files. And one of my favorite features is not only can you restore files from anywhere in the world online, but if you're sort of stuck somewhere with a slow download connection where it's gonna take days and days to get your stuff, Backblaze will actually FedEx overnight you a hard drive with all of your backed up files. You can sort of clone that drive, 
drive, copy the stuff over manually, locally, and when you're all done, as long as you return that drive to Backblaze, it costs you nothing. This is not something you wanna put off any longer. You wanna make sure those irreplaceable photos and videos and files and all that stuff is backed up safely and securely with Backblaze today. Unlimited backup of everything on your computer for just six bucks a month. But let me do you one better. Let me give you a free trial at that link down below or by going to backblaze.com slash tack, you're gonna get a 15 day fully featured free trial. So learn the service, play around with it and start getting all those documents and photos and everything on your computer backed up today with Backblaze. Learn more at that link down below or by going to backblaze.com slash tack. Next, let's sort of cross the line between the products that are very likely to launch a WWDC to those that are sort of likely, maybe they're the wild cards, the one more things, the products we are really hoping to see that we just don't know if they'll actually launch or not. The first, probably the most obvious, is the beloved iMac Pro that we're hoping Apple is going to make. Ever since Apple took the wraps off of the colorful M1 iMac at the Spring Loaded event, there has been a lot of rumors and speculation and just a lot of hope that there is another iMac in store for us. It's a little bit more professional and that kind of lives up to the rumors and the concepts that looks like a Pro Display XDR sort of shrunken down that has a super powerful M1X or M2 processor inside that is a larger display that sort of gives us this pro-end iMac experience that's like the iMac that we saw introduced, but sort of takes it up to another level. There was a lot of speculation and a lot of hopes and prayers that we could see this launch at WWDC, but it doesn't look likely. At least the rumors don't suggest that it is a near an imminent launch. We did hear recently that Apple had supposedly paused work on this larger iMac to kind of dedicate resources to the launch of the 24 inch iMac that we just got. So at least we kind of know through this sort of backhanded confirmation that it does in fact exist, but we don't know what the timeline for this is, what it's going to look like, what it's going to have inside. We just don't know. It could just be a larger version of the colorful iMac we just got. Some other products on the horizon are a new MacBook Air and a new Mac Mini. Both of these come courtesy of John Prosser and look absolutely amazing. And according to him, Apple is working on some updates to these new products. The MacBook Air would be colorful. It have a white keyboard, maybe even a white bezel around the display, a collection of two USB-C ports, and could be a really great addition to the lineup. And again, bring that splash of color from the iMac and the iPad down the line to Apple's laptop collection. We're also hearing that Apple is working on a higher end version of the MacBook Air, but we're not sure if this is the same machine or when this could launch. And also according to John Prosser, Apple is planning a redesign of the Mac mini that should be filled with all the ports you'd want, like USB-C ports and an HDMI port that could potentially also get colors as well as this new design, though it's very unclear when these products will launch, potentially maybe sometime this year with these new M1X processors, sort of this next generation, or maybe sometime next year. Doesn't look like these are close enough at all to launching a WWDC, but just something to sort of keep on your radar that Apple is planning new Macs, new Macs are coming, and hopefully that we could see them launch sometime this year, if not early 2022. And that is it for WWDC. I am really personally very excited to see iOS 15 and the updates that come to the iPad and the Mac, and I'm crossing my fingers for some big hardware upgrades and hopefully some product announcements, and uh, hopefully we will see what ends up coming in just a few days from now. What are you guys most excited to see? Do you wanna get a new MacBook Pro? Are you planning to buy a new MacBook Pro? Are you holding out for that iMac Pro? Or is there a surprise one more thing that I didn't mention that you really hope Apple introduces at that event? Curious, what are you most looking forward to? What do you think we'll see? Leave those answers in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see y'all in the next one.